physicality is always a limitation, isn't it? You can stretch it. But there is a limitation for physical body. Physical means limit, isn't it? Because the basis of physicality is a limited boundary, isn't it so? Only because there is a limited boundary, you can call this physical. If you take away a defined boundary that a physical form has, there is no such thing as physicality. That which is boundless is not physical, isn't it? So is there a boundary? Definitely there is. Nature has set up substantial limitations upon you, but what I am talking about is you are inventing new limitations. This is not necessary. As it is, nature has set up enough limitations upon you. You don't have to invent new limitations and make yourself much smaller than what you are. A human being is… Densely there's so much talk about God and heaven and nonsense, mainly because human beings have not realized the immensity of what it means to be human. That is the main problem. If you are experiencing the immensity of what it means to be human, you wouldn't be talking so much about other things. This is a grand thing by itself. He makes sufficient your human being over the afternoon. Isn't… is it not a grand thing? But he is doing it unconsciously. If he can consciously convert a fish into your human being, it is a phenomena, isn't it? Isn't it so? It is an impossible phenomena which all of you are performing, but unconsciously. So how much of you has entered into your consciousness? That's a question. If you look at it, actually not even one percent of who you are has entered into your consciousness right now. If a few more percentage points enter, suddenly everything that you do looks like superhuman. Now people around me, Every day witness things which they can't believe. So people keep on saying, Sadhguru, are you superhuman? Are you a human being? I keep reminding them, this is not about being superhuman. This is about realizing being human is super. Now, let me tell you a story. A certain man got spiritual thirst. In those days when they got a spiritual thirst, they went into the forest. So he went into the jungle, found a nice rock for him to sit and meditate. He sat down, then he noticed a little away from him, there was a fox. Both its forelegs were severed, crippled fox probably in some trap, hunter's trap, both its legs gone. Nature is not kind to any kind of incapability. This taking care of incapable people is essentially a human… you know, it's a human society trait. In nature, if you are not capable of earning your own food, you are done. So here, there is a fox without both its four legs, but looking healthy and well fed. He noticed this and he thought, how is this fox managing without legs? Then he sat down, he has to do his meditation. Um, he started. Um, 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 went on for some time. As the evening came, he heard the growl of a lion. The moment he heard, oh, arm um, went away <laughs> and he ran up a tree and sat down. He forgot about the meditation. Then the lion came with a piece of meat in its mouth, came and dropped it in front of the crippled fox. And the fox ate this meat and the lion went away. This man thought, oh, this is a divine message. God is trying to say something to me. A crippled fox being fed by a ferocious lion, this is a miracle of miracles. God is sending a message to me, what's the message, what's the message, what's the message? He completely forgot about his meditation and started thinking, what is the message? Then he arrived at his own message. He said, oh, God is trying to tell me, 
in this miraculous forest even a crippled fox is being fed by a ferocious lion when this is so you fool you on the spiritual path what are you thinking about food just sit there it will anyway come to you so he sat down um one day second day um third day um, Sixth, seventh day, he is groaning for life, not able to move, totally weakened. He was groaning, death thoughts. A yogi was passing this way. He heard these noises, he came up to him and asked, What happened to you? Why are you like this? He said, Oh, you great yogi, please tell me I got a divine message. I went by it and I became like this. Yogi asked, what happened? He said, here, look at that fox. Look at him, he is well fed. Every day, this lion comes with a piece of meat and it feeds him. Don't you think this is a divine message? Please tell me, is this a divine message? The yogi said, for sure, this is a divine message. But why did you choose to imitate a crippled fox rather than a generous lion. <laughs> so this is the choice you have. If you are imitating a crippled fox, a generous lion looks like a miracle. It's not a miracle, it is doable. Yes, it is doable, nothing miraculous about it. but. There are two ways to look at it. One way is, everything is a miracle. Tell me, you put filth into the ground and mangoes come out of the tree, sweetness. The filth and the sweetness of the mangoes, are they same? They are same. Isn't it so? Aren't they same? The food that you eat and what you do in your toilet the next day, they are same, isn't it so? Yes or no? If you put that same filth into the field tomorrow, once again it becomes your food, isn't it so? It is the same. But can you treat both of them the same way? No, you need discretion as to how to treat it, but they are same, isn't it? Making filth into mangoes, is this not a miracle? Making fish into a human being, is this not a miracle? Yes or no? Everything is a miracle. That's one way of looking at life. Another way of looking at life is nothing is a miracle. Everything is happening between cause and effect. If you are short-sighted enough not to be able to see the cause, you're only seeing the effect, then it is like this. If you're able to see both the cause and the effect, everything is explainable, everything is repeatable, everything is possible to make it happen. Now I am talking about a technology to make you into a miracle. But this is not a miracle. All technologies look like miracle, isn't it? Suppose you know nothing about electricity and the hall is dark right now and I tell you, you just watch it now, I will just touch this part of the wall and the hall will be flooded with light. And if I do it, wow, you will bow down to me. Yes or no? Anything that you do not understand is a miracle for you, isn't it? Yes? Anything that you are unable to grasp is a miracle for you. Now I'm going to pull out something from my pocket, just a combination of plastic and metal. I'm going to do this and talk to somebody in India or America or where you want. Is this a miracle or not? The problem is all of you have it, this is the problem. <laughs> Only if I had it, you know, if I had a cell phone thousand years ago, I would have become God himself. The damn thing came to me too late. <laughs> if I had a light bulb a thousand years ago, I could have become a God. The damn thing came too late. Technologies never come in time, you know. <laughs>
Anything that you do not understand is a miracle for you. And at the same time, is there any one thing that you truly understand? I want you to look at this. Do you understand this flower fully? Do you? You may have studied botany for ten thousand years, but do you understand this flower fully? Do you understand a single atom in this existence? Do you? No? So everything is a miracle. If you look deep enough, everything is miraculous. On one level, everything is explainable. On another level, everything is miraculous. That's the beauty of life. If you have the necessary reason and the necessary sense of wonder and inquiry in you, you can know it all and still wonder about it because you can study this flower for the rest of your life and still wonder about it. That's the beauty of existence, isn't it? Or you can be a fool who will draw conclusions about this flower and believe you know it. That's a difference. Everything about your life is like this, isn't it so? Yes? Everything about your life is like this. So it's miraculous and mundane at the same time. It is within reason and beyond reason at the same time. It is human and divine at the same time. You can play between the two. It's very beautiful. You can also become an animal, you know. Very easily human beings can behave like animals, isn't it? Because what is human is not established. You can freely, seamlessly move from animal nature to human nature to divine nature and back again if you wish. It's very beautiful. Don't mess it up. <laughs>